Hey everyone, thank you for coming. Um, I'm Franco, co-founder and CEO at the Nomic Foundation, and today I'm going to be telling you a bit about uh, the story of how we got here, what we're working on, uh, and a bit of our vision for the organization. Um, so Nomic Foundation, Ethereum dedicates a nonprofit. Um, we basically build developer infrastructure and developer tooling uh, to improve Ethereum developer experience. That means we're working for Ethereum, we're dedicated to Ethereum, um, and we're trying to empower developers to decentralize the world. So we're best known for building Hardhat. Um, Hardhat is the leading developer tool um, in Ethereum ecosystem and beyond. You know, developers use it to build uh, tasks and debug software. Um, there, there's a whole ecosystem of community plugins and nice things going on there. <laughs> um, but we didn't always uh, do this, uh, and I'll share a bit of the story of how we got here. You know, we got involved with Ethereum in 2017. Um, we built contracts, dApps, we audited uh, stuff, um, but by 2018 uh, we started focusing on audits, and out of our own need, uh, to be more effective when doing technical work. Uh, we started working on a developer tool, um, while at the same time we were uh, you know, exploring what to do. Uh, we were founders trying to find what we actually wanted to, to work on, and all this was just our way of paying the bills. Uh, but we needed to be more effective. Um, so we created Builder, <laughs> which then in 2020 became Hardhat, because that was an awful name. Um, and you know, it was for internal use. Um, we open sourced it. Some of our friends liked it. Uh, people started using it. Uh, we uh, saw a need for it. Uh, we applied for a grant from the Ethereum Foundation, uh, which they gave to us. And you know, we spent the rest of the year uh, continuing our exploration for what we wanted to do uh, while you know, working on, on the side on, on, on Bidler to deliver on the roadmap that we set out for the grant. Um, but uh, you know, by 2019, we realized that uh, something needed to change. Uh, we needed to, to focus on, on something to, to actually do it well. Um, and you know, we we had, or actually, my co-founder Patricio uh, had this vision for what uh, Hardhead could grow into. Uh, you know, there were big missing things, um, and we knew that uh, if we just built out these things that were missing, uh, there was a lot of value that we could add to a lot of people. And you know, we were just thinking at, about the, the level of productivity that people were dealing with. And you know, if we managed to improve that very significantly, uh, it was very interesting to think what it could do, mean for the entire Ethereum ecosystem. Um, so with four months of runway in the bank, uh, we decided to drop all of the auditing and focus on our little open source project that had maybe 10, 15 <laughs> users. Um, so, um, yeah. That's where uh, our relationship with the Ethereum Foundation started. Um, you know, as he focused, my co-founder focused on building, I went out to get some more money. I asked absolutely everyone that was uh, close to the EVM. This was 2018, the, the year where Ethereum killers uh, were hot. Uh, so I asked everyone for money. Almost no one gave us money. But <laughs> we had an existing relationship with Ethereum Foundation, so there was a conversation ongoing there. And through that, we ended up meeting some people at the management team of Ethereum Foundation um, who um, turned out were looking for ways for people in the community uh, that could, could help them improve Ethereum developer experience. Right? They knew it was an issue uh, that needed improvements. And what they found in us was you know, a team that had a working product, some users, uh, a diagnosis of the situation, a concrete plan, and we were looking for funding. Um, so it was a, a pretty good match. We started collaborating with them. They gave us another small grant uh, to implement uh, solid stack traces. Um, and as part of the, this same collaboration, as, um, we would 
generally help them improve Ethereum, right? This was uh, not just working on hard hat, but how do we make Ethereum as a whole better? And we ended up putting together a very small, or relatively small, uh, roadmap of projects that we thought uh, were very high priority, high impact, that could be delivered quickly and would make a meaningful difference in a uh, short amount of time. We worked on that, it was great, uh, went really well, we hit it off. Um, and by 2020, um, you know, the relationship took another step uh, and we became uh, what EF calls delegated domain allocators, um, which is uh, EF terminology for when they empower someone in the community to allocate EF resources to improve a specific domain within Ethereum. Um, so um, basically it started funding us more aggressively and allowing us to allocate more funding. We started giving out grants. Um, you know, we spent a bit less than the first quarter of the year doing a lot of research, trying to figure out what were the sources of all of these issues. Um, and we worked on things, like we worked on many things, but to give you an idea of the kind of Ethereum general, general Ethereum projects that we work on, uh, we got GitHub to have uh, Solidity give, give uh, syntax highlighting on by default before you needed to use an obscure dot file in your repo for that to work. We uh, entirely replaced uh, the cryptography dependencies that were being used across the stack. Uh, that was a, a pretty big project uh, today that, that's called uh, Ethereum Cryptography, where you know, we worked, we put together a new package with all of the cryptography uh, primitives that were needed, and then worked with every single uh, team maintaining all of the different components across the stack to replace them, and uh, that, was, that led to the entire thing being a lot more reliable and have less friction. Uh, these are some examples of like 17 different projects that we work on this year, but just to give you an idea, of, it was just pure Ethereum and not really anything related to, to hard hat. Um, so 2020, hard hat really takes off. Um, it wasn't until 2021 that it got really crazy. Uh, but by 2020, by the end of 2020, the trend was very, very clear. You know, the, 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 the professional core ecosystem of Ethereum had uh, mostly all of them adopted uh, hard hat. And this was great, a lot of fun. Um, people were very happy with the product. And you know, we learned a ton. Um, you know, but by the end of the year, we, we realized a whole bunch of things. These are, I think, the main takeaways. Uh, the main one being doing this is very hard. You know, building sophisticated tooling, it's for Ethereum specifically, uh, in its current state, it's super challenging. And we realized that the next 10x, uh, so you know, during, with all of this work and a lot of other things that went uh, on that year in the ecosystem, Ethereum DevX improved hugely. Um, and we, but there's still a lot more uh, that can be done. And we realized that you know, the next 10x is not going to come from hard hat. It's not going to come from any single tool out there. Um, because what we realized is that you know, a, a great, great development platform for Ethereum in, let's say, five years is one that is diverse. You know, today, the ecosystem is very focused on Node.js uh, and Solidity, but that's unlikely to remain the case for, for a long time. And in software, uh, you know, for the exact same problem, there are a variety of different solutions that are all valid, depending on personal preference, on circumstance, on different trade-offs that uh, different projects have. Um, so just having a few or you know, one or two solutions for each thing uh, usually is not the case in larger uh, platforms. So we know that what we need is not you know, another specific feature. It's not about missing functionality, the next big step up. It's more about general growth and more availability and diversity within the tool, within the ecosystem, which is you know, the third point. Um, so we need... Uh, a new plan, you know, hard hat and everything else that we worked on uh, in 2020 uh, worked out. Uh, but that was a very, you know, urgent execution of, oh my God, this needs to be better. Let's do it better. Um, but then we, we need an entirely new plan because to, to do that uh, weren't actually that many. In one year, we, we covered most of it. So, but to, for, you know, 2021 and forward, we came up with a new plan that we proposed uh, to Ethereum Foundation, and we realized basically that what we had to do was is uh, go one layer below hard hat, 
and rebuild the foundations down there. You know, the things that weren't there that we would have loved to be there when we built Hard Hat, build those things so that other people will build more things like Hard Hat, Truffle, Remix, Brownie, um, and so on. So that's a new plan. You know, build core infrastructure to make it easier, cheaper, um, and certainly better to build new developer tools like Hard Hat. Uh, so, and I'll get into what that actually means in a bit. But you know, by 2021, um, the crypto market uh, was you know, in, in the advanced stage of the, the bull market. And the whole reason why we were doing this in the beginning as entrepreneurs who were trying to build a business was, well, to build a business, right? Like, the whole, even the relationship with the EF felt like a win-win because we would get to build our product, build relationships, build a position of leadership, build a brand, and in the process, help them improve Ethereum, which would grow the pipe for everyone. It was a win-win, but it was uh, initially we saw it as a great strategic stepping stone towards eventually building a business, monetizing something. Um, and given the, the, the market context um, being ideal for fundraising, we thought that if we're actually going to do it, build a business around this, now is the time to fundraise, get the money, and do it. So we felt forced uh, to make a decision, um, and we decided not to. Um, and the reasons why we decided not to build a business and instead turned into a nonprofit um, are a bunch, and I can't cover them all. And um, some have to do with uh, what we think is best for Ethereum in the long term, and many others have a lot to do with just personal uh, things, motivations, and preferences that we, the founders, have. And you know, the main three ones that I'd like to share today is one, uh, we loved. Uh, the experience of working for Ethereum. Um, you know, we had spent the past year and a half uh, basically being part of the Ethereum team since our mandate towards the, the EF was improve Ethereum, you know, the, deliver value to Ethereum developers. And even hard hat was just something that at the time needed to happen. You know, it was the right vehicle at the time to deliver value to Ethereum developers, but end to end, the whole thing that we were doing was trying to um, improve Ethereum. And this was an amazing experience, super gratifying, super challenging. Um, simulating, and we didn't want to uh, let go of that and simply seal ourselves to just how do we make money out of our head, um, which would have been a much smaller scope than what we have been working on so far. Another thing is that developer experience we think is absolutely core, crucial, and critical uh, to Ethereum, and it's also very hard. You know, there's a lot of attention that goes to uh, the the work being done on the protocol layer and makes sense. It's amazing uh, work. The, the, the merge has been an insane feat of engineering. Um, and without taking any kind of credit away uh, from how critical all of that work is, uh, we shouldn't forget that all of that work uh, is there to support what Ethereum offers. You know, the network supports the value proposition, which is a platform to build decentralized software. Um, so if we have the most amazing scalable network and it's decentralized, um, but when you actually want to use it to build something on top, it's not that great, then that's a significant issue for Ethereum. Um, so we think this is uh, just a really valuable contribution that we can make uh, to, to the project. Um, and then, you know, the, the entire speed of innovation in the ecosystem and its growth are very much directly affected by developer productivity. You know, the faster your developers can write code, iterate, debug, test, launch, and repeat, <laughs> uh, you know, the faster uh, everything will improve, the more users will be captured. Uh, generally, uh, by improving developer experience, we inject productivity into every single team into the ecosystem, which has a super powerful compounding effect over the long term, right? Like, Faster, 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 faster. And then the last one, um, you know, <laughs> tell me you're from a developed country without saying you're from a developed country. Crypto has no use cases. You know, like as Argentine founders, um, we got involved with crypto in 2015, initially with Bitcoin, and having lived our entire lives in Argentina and ex struggled and experienced the day-to-day -day limitations that come from living in a place like that, uh, even in 2015, it was really obvious that this thing uh, was had the potential to meet 
mean something very meaningful to a lot of people, um, and we're just very big believers in what this can change and mean uh, in the long term for people who live um, in countries like ours. Um, so we went ahead with it, and we raised $22 million in donations from across the ecosystem, with the Ethereum Foundation being uh, the largest donor, but we had a bunch of amazing uh, organizations and uh, individuals uh, donating to get this new Ethereum nonprofit off the ground. You know, Uniswap now, Vitalik, Coinbase, the Graph, Chainlink, Polygon, uh, and many others, um, all very um, long-term thinking organizations that were very thankful towards. Um, so how are we going to do all of this? How are we actually going to empower uh, developers to decentralize the world? Um, you know, as I, I mentioned before, we came up with a new plan that was all about uh, getting the entire tooling ecosystem to uh, grow more and become, become more diverse. And for that, we're basically building new infrastructure uh, to make it easy to do that. These two components, Slang and RefNet, are actually one same project, massive project with two very large components. Uh, Slang is a new Solidity compiler that uh, we're building, um, which is um, designed from the ground up to make it easier to build developer tooling uh, for Solidity. Right? So it turns out that in a development platform, the very core of it is the compiler, and many of the tools that we use uh, rely and integrate deeply with the compiler. So um, if we actually design the compiler to, for that purpose, it's going, it's, it can be a lot easier, more effective uh, than it is today. And you know, this isn't meant to replace SOLC. Um, SOLC, uh, it's, you know, compiles and you deploy it to mainnet, and this compiler is not going to be for that. Uh, it's going to be used during the development process because um, its main you know, the target audience is tool developers, and what we care about is basically making sure that there are great insights during the development process, not when you need to deploy it. And by not aiming for a mainnet deployment, we're actually able to rid ourselves of a lot of very difficult constraints that Solsi has to deal with and make those constraints uh, make many of the things that we want to do basically impossible to do for the Solsi team. So these two compilers are actually going to be complementary, and, and we're going to be using them together. Um, there are one, RefNet. It's going to be a reusable device in runtime also to build tooling. You know, it turns out that Hardhat is actually a pretty complex piece of software um, with completely different ob objectives and constraints. It's basically an Ethereum node. You know, it's got a lot of the very same components, a mempool, an EVM, and storage. Um, consensus component and an entire layer of debugging features on top where we do runtime observation to figure out what's going on with the bytecode execution to then uh, tell developers. And you know that's what basically every tool that wants to provide the uh, runtime insights to developers has to do. Right? It's what we've all done. Truffle, Brownie, Remix, we've all built the same thing, which requires very in-depth knowledge of uh, the platform because you need to basically uh, build an Ethereum node, right? Like when you use mainnet forking in hardhat, it pulls data from mainnet and it works as if it's mainnet. It's basically uh, a, a node with very different objectives. Um, so um, if someone wants to build a new tool, instead of them spending six months figuring this out, putting the pieces together to only then start working on the very first developer feature, we can just build a thing that is reusable, that is extensible, that is very modular, and that if someone wants to build a new developer tool, they can use as a, a starting point, and it will be a lot easier. You know, these are the things that we would have loved uh, to have when we built Hardhat and didn't, and we suffer through it, and we don't want anyone else <laughs> to live through that. Um, so, um, where's Hardhat in all of this? We haven't forgotten about Hardhat. Hardhat very much remains a very core uh, priority for Nomic, and you know the the these projects are all about the long term. You know, like they will take a while to drive meaningful impact as they are dependent on other people building things on top that then end users use, uh, but until then, developers still have needs today. You know have users to service, bugs to fix, um, and Hardhat remains our um, response to those needs that developers have today. So Hardhat is growing. So 
we're expanding and continuing to increase our investment into Hernet, and it's expanding into a suite of tools. Uh, Hardhead Runner and Hardhead Network are the main components that everyone's been using. You know, the, the CLI task runner, which um, is basically what you run, and what contains the um, the config system and the plugin architecture and all all of the extensibility and the kind of starting point that connects everything else. Uh, that's Hardhead Runner. Then Hardhead Network is the development node. And we recently, this year, launched our VS Code extension, which uh, makes um, Solidity editing feel a lot more modern, it provides uh, basically advanced uh, Solidity editing assistance. John gave a talk about it uh, yesterday that you should uh, look up. Um, and then Ignition has been uh, in development for a while. We're going to, to launch it soon. Um, it's going to be this uh, infrastructure um, as code deployment tool that we're hoping uh, will change the game of deployments. And then what, what you're going to uh, start seeing is that all of these things start seeing more and more integrations across them. Um, while we're trying to, we're trying to know, it's an objective uh, that these things can be used in isolation including uh, in combination with other tools. But if you use them together, uh, cool things uh, should happen. Um, so that's basically the roadmap. Um, we're 12 people. We're Ethereum dedicated. We're impact driven. Uh, what we do doesn't run after financial metrics. Um, and you know, if you would like to write some Rust to build a compiler or help us improve hard hat, uh, to you know, continue empowering the ecosystem to keep building cool stuff, we're hiring. That's it. Thank you.